The new year is a time where there is a lot of rhetoric about new year, new you, and setting big goals. But what if instead of focusing on all the things that you need to attain, you focus on how you want to feel as you move through your days? This episode, we get to talk with my lifelong friend and mentor, Tara, about intention setting. This practice has changed my life and provides a new take on resolutions and ways to show up in alignment with your values each day. You will hear us get really vulnerable on this one. It's actually the scariest podcast episode to date because we share our intentions and wildest dreams for the year ahead. So what is your wildest dream? How do you want to feel as you work towards it? Let's explore it together. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to How the Wise One Grows. Before we get started, let's take a moment to land here together. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, try to find stillness. So maybe that means stopping physically moving. Maybe it just means resting a hand on some part of the body. And then take a moment to notice where your body touches the earth. Feel your spine lengthen and your shoulders soften down the back. And take a big breath in and a big breath out. Inhale, fill your chest, fill your belly with air. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. Again, inhale, fill the chest, fill the belly with air. Exhale, open your mouth, let it out. One more, inhale. And exhale. And return to that sensation of where your body touches the earth. And let that be a point you can return to throughout our conversation today. And you can slowly open your eyes as you return to this space. Thank you all so much for landing here with us today. I am so excited for this conversation because we get to have one of my dearest friends back today, Tara Eschenroder. So we did an episode with Tara. Um, I wish I remembered the episode number right now, but I'll put it in the show notes about (laughs) trust and intuition, discerning between your anxiety and intuition. It is wonderful. I highly recommend you give it a listen. But today, as we are in the midst of talking about New Year's resolutions and reflecting on the year behind us, we're going to talk to Tara about intention setting. So we're going to start with a quick little intro of Tara, but you can listen to more in our last episode. Tara is a 500-hour E-R-Y-T, 200-hour E-R-Y-T, R-C-Y-T, Y-A-C-E-P, <laughs> every letter of the alphabet, <laughs> certified coach and mentor, and self-published author. Tara is an accomplished yogi who was, de- who was voted one of the top three yoga instructors by Richmond Magazine. Thank you so much for being back with us today and sharing your time to talk about this with us. Thank you, Halls, and thank you for sitting here with me on my couch that first episode. You were sitting exactly where I'm sitting right now, and I, love I was that. perched up where you are. Right now. <laughs> We've kind of switched roles in yes. the virtual world. <laughs> it's an honor to be back here with you and to be a part of this vision that continues to grow. Your your podcast has become a regular staple in my own life school, Holly. Thank you. Mm, thank you. 
So I am so excited because what we're going to talk about today is something you have made a part of my life school. It's intention setting. So I remember, I'm pretty sure it was when I was in college. I think it was around the time of New Year's resolutions. And I had always kind of like made a list of like my goals I wanted for the year, things I wanted to do, not even huge things, but little things like look up at the stars every night. And I remember we were talking and you were like, well, what are your intentions for the year? And I was kind of like, well, wow, (laughs) I hadn't really (laughs) thought about that. And over the years, I've really admired the way every year you set an intention of like, I think it's normally three words that are your grounding for that year. So I was wondering if you would share with us what I guess is the difference between a new year's resolution and an intention and why you set intentions. Yeah. Thanks Halls. And thank you for taking us back to, to those Charlottesville days. (laughs) UVA (laughs) imagining coming and seeing you on campus. Mm, So special. Um, Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And so an intention and a resolution, right? So Mm -hmm. when, when I think of a new year's resolution, I think of a goal, right? Or like the target, the bullseye, if you will. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Absolutely not. That's really important. I mean, as somebody, imagine somebody shooting a bow and an arrow, we don't want them to just be blindly flinging arrows into, the people, right? <laughs> no, we like, do not. <laughs> the Lord save the bird. And so I speak an analogy often, as you know. And so the 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 resolution being more the goal, the target, the bullseye, the intention more being the experience of the journey, right? The entire process of first realizing you have a direction in which you want to go right and then setting your sights on what that is and then picking out which arrow you want to use to then putting it in the bow to then drawing back the string to then noticing your breath and making sure you're not shaking all over the place to then realizing I'm still holding on to this thing. I'm still holding on to this thing. I'm still holding on to this thing to letting it fly, right? And then rinsing and repeating that process, right? So resolution is that bullseye, right? That goal, not a bad thing, right? The intention is that entire journey, right? And and they're similar because they both require us to check in with ourselves. They both require that self-inquiry, right? Hopefully rooted from a place of integrity, right? That you and I talk a lot about and, and values, hopefully, right? And, and they're different because the resolution is this thing in the future, right? The intention is presence right now, right? Like how how I am feeling while I am getting clear on what it is I desire in the future, right? The goal is fixed. The journey is fluid. Hmm. I love that analogy. And I really like to think about our intentions versus our goals or resolutions as I see my intention as how I want to be as I work towards that. And as I focus on how I want to be, to me, that becomes more important than the end result. So if like, as I'm working towards this goal, I'm focusing on the way I'm being and it changes and adjusts the goal end result does like, that's okay. But if I'm staying rooted in that, that intention, that value that I have, that's the work. Um, and it's great when it aligns and you meet your goals through that, but it also kind of helps me let go of the attachment around the goal so much and focus more on how I want to be in this life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and how we want to feel, Mm -hmm. right. There are four questions that I'd love to share. Yes. That 
<laughs> that <laughs> I learned from we we che we check in with these questions on our birthdays um and also i like to do it we like to do it in the new years to uh cass and brent two of my soul family members here in appalachia that actually we met in richmond oh wow <laughs> so many years that. ago yeah, yeah that's a whole nother story how we literally were like connecting in these different places all over the country and we both landed here and so we like to check in with these these four questions, right? And my intention for, with all the pun intended, for sharing <laughs> these questions is because it allows us to do this sort of like bird's eye view macrocosm check-in, right? Whether it's at the beginning of the year, end of the year, birthday, you can do this at any time. I mm -hmm. really love to to take these questions to people that I love, right? And I'd, I'd love to hear your answers. Yeah. As well, I took them to the dinner table at uh, Thanksgiving this year with my family. So, um, yeah. So to to reflect on where we've been, right? Because if we're always looking forward to, we we forget every step that that brought us here and the power of compost, right? That which is no longer living, however, providing information and nourishment to where we're going mm -hmm. and to check in with ourselves. Like you were saying, how do I want to be? How do I want to feel? So this first, the first question is what's something that you're proud of? Like, so instead of like focusing on all the things that I want to do that haven't been done yet, what's something that you're celebrating? first and foremost right now I love that question so much because I remind myself of this a lot when I notice that voice of criticism I'm like okay what would Holly a year ago feel about Holly today like what would yeah. she say it's normally like a hell yeah like <laughs> you're doing great yes so for me I think that lately I've been really proud of the way that I'm allowing myself to change and to kind of shift course and get to know new parts of myself and to step into it. What about you? Mm. I love that, Halls. Mm. Allowing myself to change. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I am feeling very proud of my relationship with myself mm. and what that looks like is being so much more kind yes and whether that is writing i i like to write notes to myself on my mirror um and uh as daily reminders um whether that is moving slowly when i find myself rushing to like cut an apple like a super cute <laughs> tiger is chasing me and like tasting the apple, right? Mm -hmm. Like allowing myself to slow down, allowing myself to soften. Um, and, and noticing how being so much more kind to myself, how that is rippling outwards into my external relationships, whether it is noticing the squirrel, whether it is conversing with the person ringing out my groceries at Trader Joe's, whether it is having a conversation with a soul fam or family member, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and seeing that ripple effect. So yeah, I'm feeling very proud of, of my relationship with myself. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And that asking, yeah. like, what are you proud of? That mm -hmm. That is a great reminder of that kindness towards mm -hmm. yourself. Yes. Yes, thank you for circling that right back to the question halls. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so the second question, right? So like first, before we're like, oh, all the things I have to do, like celebrate something that you're proud of that you've done. And then the second question is, what is one thing, right? And like one thing, because there can be lots of sparkles, mm -hmm. and this is a, the one thing <laughs> is helpful for my brain. <laughs> What is one thing that you want to accomplish within, within, and it can be the year, it can be any time frame that you put on it. And for, for the, the topic of this conversation, we're talking about the next year. So what is one thing that you want to accomplish within 
the next year? For me, it is putting my first book out into the world. Okay. And it might not be exactly within the year, but that, but making the strides in that direction and hopefully getting it out within the year. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to hold it in my hands. And <laughs> me too. <laughs> I had the absolute gift of receiving a postcard mm-hmm. from Holly a few days ago, which is now on my altar behind us. And it's like, I, I can see this book in my mind. see it (laughs) and what is something for you that you're hoping to accomplish yeah thanks halls and and so this could be an example of a resolution yes exactly this is Mm -hmm. this is it's not a resolutions are not bad (laughs) right but like if we are only focusing on that so I would very much like to accomplish feeling so rooted in the financial foundation that Mm. I have established for myself and really made a priority over this past year that is going to continue to allow me the locational freedom, the time freedom that has been so crystal clear, something that I desire, and to feel really, really rooted in in that... um, yeah, that foundational, uh, founda- foundational, foundational, word, <laughs> financial, <laughs> financial foundation, um, and and system and rhythm and plan that I've cultivated over the year with an amazing support system. So. I love that, and I love that you have the what you want from that mm. in turn as a part oh, of that. Right. Yes. Yeah, I mean, see, seeing finances as another energetic exchange. Absolutely. Like had a chance to listen to Holly's last episode about your relationship <laughs> with money. I highly. <laughs> a very important <laughs> one. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm, yes, here's to that book and that financial freedom. Yes. And so now the next question is my personal favorite. Hmm. And that is how do you want to feel, right? And and this question in particularly, I love that it actually comes after the what you want to accomplish because I almost see this as like the underlying foundation mm-hmm. right, of of this this resolution, if you will. This, this I want to meet this goal, right? This speaks directly to your values and your integrity. Like you were saying, how, how do I want to be? How do I want to feel in the entire process? Mm -hmm. And I think right away of James Clear and how the author of Atomic Habits and how he, he states that every action is a vote for or against how you want to be, how you want to feel. Right. So getting, getting crystal clear on this entire process of the journey how do I want to feel in meeting this goal and all of my goals? How do I want to feel when I wake up in the morning? How do I want to feel when I go to bed at night? How do I want to feel when I'm interacting with people that I plan to interact with or somebody that is a surprise? Like how, how do I want to feel in the way that I show up? And when I check in with myself at the end of the day, I feel that I was living in my truth, right? Mm. So how do you want to feel? within the next year I want to feel authentic in what I'm putting out there in all of the forms that it comes and authentic in the way that I am relating to myself relating to others and relating to my work and I want to feel really present for all of it for and that doesn't just mean the good stuff that means the bad stuff I want to not resist what's happening and just be there for my life as it is and I want to be compassionate to myself to others as I'm moving through that process so just being rooted in my authentic self and checking in with that and allowing myself to share that being present for all that it's going to hold 
and then being really, really kind to myself and others along the way. I, let's keep hanging out, please. <laughs> we better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just retethered me to my center, and I already mm. felt pretty centered. <laughs> How are you hoping to... Passionate. Mm. How do you want to feel as you move through your next year? Yeah, I want to feel... I also have three words that I've been leaning into. This is actually a math equation that makes sense to my brain. Because as you know, I'm very much the, I'll draw a picture of anything or I'll create a, a creative movement. Um, so I want to feel connected. Mm. And I want to, and this is connected to self, connected to source, connected to others, right? So this is starts here. I want to feel held and I want to, and also a part of that is allowing myself to be mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, and at the same time, I want to feel free. Right. So what I, what I think of when I lean into these words, connected, held and free, I think of, of a tree, right. And how they, they are, so deeply connected to to earth and to one another in this underground root system right and it mm -hmm. is in this allowing themselves to be held by earth and they're not going to question it they're a tree <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like it's a very much allowing themselves to be held so connected held and as a result of that how they expand upwards and outwards to be able to literally dance sometimes right and they grow unapologetically with wisdom towards this light source, right? This is consciousness. And so that then I feel leads to expansive, right? So I want to feel expansive in love and integrity. So connected health, mm. connected plus, plus held plus free equals expansive, right? Mm. Expands. So expanding in love and integrity. Thank you for sharing those. I feel that. I just see you as my little tree. <laughs> Not my little tree, big tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. And, mm -hmm. and this uh, love and integrity um, as well, speaking to values. Um, if I were to, to pick two of my most important values, those are, those are the two. And so I want to be, I want to I want to feel expansive and expanding mm. in those two. Yeah. Thank you. Mm, so good. I, I love having these conversations with you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it is hard to pick a favorite question because this one's really fun too. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is, it's another like one thing, right? What is one thing? that you're willing to call in that is one of your wildest dreams? Mm. What does the calling <laughs> in mean? Yeah, so that's a really great question. So calling in, and then it's sort of like how I was talking about, I want to feel held and then allow myself to be. Mm -hmm. So calling in and then willing to receive, right? Mm. So something that you acknowledge that maybe you'd go to this place of that's not possible, but like, that'd be really freaking cool. Right. Mm -hmm. So something that you'd be willing to acknowledge that you desire this so deeply and you would be willing to receive it. Mm. I think there's a lot. <laughs> taking a moment to land on the one thing that's calling to me right now I'm taking a note from Liz right now and just bringing my hand on my heart and feeling my breath and I think one thing that I I really want to call in is to feel contentment and ease with myself and with my work and however it unfolds and 
willing to let go of the criticism that I place on myself, on relationships, on work, and dropping in and, and being really compassionate with where things are out as they are and giving thanks for what is. I, I really appreciate the way that you also named letting go of what things might need to look like, mm -hmm. right? Allowing yourself to to occupy that santosha, that contentment. Yeah, and I think that's why that was a hard question to answer too, because I had mm. in my head maybe more tangible goals, but I was mm -hmm. trying to shift more on what matters more to me. Is it that end result or is it that space of being and way I'm feeling as I yeah. am working towards it? Yeah. Yeah, Halls, that makes me think of one of my favorite poems that I believe I've shared with you a few times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will not die an unlived life, Donna Markova. Mm. And she says in that poem, I, I will not die an unlived life. I will not live in fear. Of failing and she continues on and then mid poem she says I am willing to risk my fitness mm. right like giving voice to these things that we feel so much vulnerability around saying out loud yes right I I also when I get to this question I'm kind of like oh, every single time <laughs> do, do I do I risk do I risk giving this thing that I care so deeply about that clearly there is some doubt around it because mm -hmm. we are putting this in the category of wildest dreams. Yes. Right. And accompanied with some sparkles of hope because they make it that it makes us feel excited. Mm -hmm. when when we think about it right excited in a rooted way so so yeah that I am willing to risk my significance so thank you for for giving that voice Halls. yeah and as you say that I'm gonna make myself be a little more authentic here and yeah. that you know I want to have a best-selling book and that is the like you know the thing that maybe I doubt a little in my head and more important than that, I want to feel really grounded and authentic as I'm working towards that. Yeah. And remaining present and compassionate yeah. with yourself through the process, right? Like that's, that was so beautiful how you just exemplified that, Halls, this, this resolution, if you will, of best-selling book, right? Mm -hmm. And acknowledging I want to continue to remain feeling authentic present and so kind to myself and others through this process yes yeah that's what yeah. I'm talking about and thanks <laughs> for holding the space because there was a lot of like fear that came up I'm like am I gonna say this out loud on podcasts mm -hmm. to people mm -hmm. but then kind of letting that intention be the grounding and the anchor and like yeah. that's yeah. the that's the soil and that's what grows true. from it is what grows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I love analogy speaking. You're mm. speaking to my heart, darling. <laughs> what wildest dream do you want to call in? Oh, goodness. Yeah. Thank you, Halls. And right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> I am willing to risk my significance. Um, and going back to my two values of, of love and integrity, um, acknowledging that two behaviors that support my values are vulnerability and honesty mm -hmm. about to get real vulnerable <laughs> <up in there. laughs> one of my wildest dreams um, is to be figuring out co-creating an empowering expansive life with my person Mm -hmm. in partnership and creating family, whatever that looks like. 
uh, I really appreciate the way that you name that in in uh, in your description of compassion, right? Because we it's like the bullseye. We get so mm-hmm. focused on exactly what that needs to look like, and acknowledging that there there are there are dreams for a reason, right? And um, yeah, so I I am ready for that and and like stumbling over my words as I say it because it makes me feel very very vulnerable saying that out yeah. loud and and I'm gonna be honest because that is what feeds that soil of love and integrity that leads to my expansion. Yes. Yeah. Thank so you so it out much loud, for universe. You said it. Everyone <laughs> listening. <laughs> yes. Thank you for sharing that and for being vulnerable. This is definitely the scariest episode yet. <laughs> <Yes. my opinion. laughs> like my armpits are sweating a little bit, and I'm like made mm-hmm. of air. <laughs> the vulner- I'll bring my family to your book selling signing. Okay. Yes, your, you your must book tour. My family will come to I cannot wait. (laughs) I'll be holding you and your whole family. (laughs) Luna will jump around everyone. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'm like actually sweating a little bit. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) That was was really important. That was really, really important. And to to take us back to soil, uh, soil, how you named that soil Mm -hmm. that, that is feeding these desires, right? These, these resolutions, whatever you want to call them, these goals, right? And so when we come back to, okay, so I'm feeling vulnerable right now. How can I be kind to myself? How can I be loving Mm -hmm. to myself? And how can I recognize that I was completely in my integrity and saying those things out loud Mm -hmm. and give myself a pat on the back, right? Exactly. And I think it's really important what we are doing here right now, because when it's that naming of your wildest dream, I think it's really scary because like you said, on some level, there's some doubt, there's some fear. There's like, am I, oh, is that like a silly thing? Is that something attainable for me in this life? Or what would people think of that? But when, if you hear that voice in your head and then you don't say what you truly desire, that's an act of harm to yourself. Mm, But if you're willing to like, say, you know what, like by saying it aloud, even if you feel scared, even if you feel like it's silly, even if it changes, that is an act of love. And I think that's why it's so important that we're like having this moment together. And I think it's so important for people listening to share your resolutions and your intentions and your dreams and your hopes in with someone doesn't have to be on a podcast (laughs) but with (laughs) someone (laughs) and and just let it be an act of like I'm willing to love myself enough here in this way and to just put plant the seed of belief in myself and putting it out there and just saying it out loud brings you a step closer to that and that it changes the way you're relating to yourself, which is going to change the way you work towards that dream that you have. Yeah, absolutely, Halls. And I'm so grateful that you named that as well, this, the importance of, of sharing in sacred space. And this, Mm. this is sacred space for us. And yes. And Thank you to every one of you who are listening to this conversation and now also sharing in this sacred space and the importance of of acknowledging who you are having these conversations with and the intention Mm -hmm. behind that, right? Like you and I share an ineffable connection of, of support and we without even having this conversation, check in with each other throughout the entire year. And what a gift to know what it is that you are desiring and what it is that you're dreaming of clearly and to know what it is that you want to feel and to be able to ask the question now, Holly, how can I support you Mm. in this year ahead? I, before this, had a session with my therapist (laughs) and we were talking about 
relationships and comparison and relationships. And she was asking like, what are some relationships in your life where that's not there? And you were one of my core people. And I think it just shows up in the way that whatever it is, I feel held. I think sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm ready. I need to be like my most present, my most, but whatever way I show up, I'm held and you make me want to drop into more of myself. So I think as we move through this next year, I think it's just continuing to do what we always do, just checking in and reminding each other to be gentle and reminding each other to be vulnerable and share that um, and playing and like making it light, just like we're doing this, we're here, I'm going to hold you in the hard things, the raw things, the happy things, and in all of it, finding a sense of just being held and and a lightness, a playfulness to it. Mm -hmm. What support can I hold for you this next year? Thank you so much for sharing, Paul's. Mm -hmm. (laughs) you pretty much spoke for me and (laughs) (laughs) the way that you whether whether we are together in person or sending a text message Mm -hmm. or recording a podcast the way that you always make me feel held and and halls the way that you allow me to show up fully as myself. And there is not one ounce of fear that if I am my complete self, that you're going to be like, peace out. I don't want to hang anymore. You know, <laughs> like I know that you, that we're in it together for life. Yeah. And, and speaking to how I want to feel is, is held connected and free, right? The way that you occupy the container of our relationship makes me feel all of those things Mm. and yeah so continuing to check in as we do and hold space for each other when it's hard and celebrate each other when it's joyful and absolutely play yes so much play right because a pendulum doesn't just swing in one direction if we're going to do the work right we get to play Mm -hmm. as hard as we do the work and I think we do a pretty good job at doing that play thing I love it (laughs) we do (laughs) and I think that question that we're speaking to right now is like what who do you need support from and what can they do is such an important one to make as a part of this intention setting because I think often we're like all right here are my hopes and dreams I'm gonna strap it on my back and I'm gonna carry it all the way up the mountain by myself but it's like you know what we're we're in this together we need support we need to share sips of water along the way carry the load for each other along the way and I think it can feel it's hard to ask for help it's uncomfortable and some people, some relationships in your life, it's just fluid and natural and just flows that way. And other relationships can be equally important, but you're still learning how to support each other. And if you don't communicate it and give voice to it, it's again, almost about that way you're supporting yourself. Like you have to say, I need and deserve these things. And I'm trying to figure out, I can't expect someone to read my mind and answer the questions I don't have answers to about how can I be supported or how can I be held in this hard thing? I can work on what do I need right now? Acknowledging that I might need some support and some help because we all do, we're human beings. And then again, having the courage and knowing that you're worthy and loved enough to say those things and ask for those things it's not a selfish thing it's not a bad thing it's not a weak thing it's a really strong human thing and it helps the people in your life be there for you and then it opens the door for them to do that in return so no not only is it an act of loving yourself it's an act of loving them and then strengthening those bonds and opening doors for communication that might be that not be there 
So I kind of have in my head, like I am used to having my people that I feel I can so drop in like this with. And then there are some people that I'm like, that's not what this relationship is for. I don't always go there, but I have it in my heart to focus on dropping into that space um, with at least one person new this year. Yeah, well, thank you for articulating that so beautifully. And, and just because there is a relationship that you don't go to that depth to, that doesn't mean that it is, there's something wrong with the relationship. Yeah. Right. We all, we all vibrate on different frequencies and that doesn't make any frequency bad or good. It's just different. Right. And, and it makes me think of um, Robin Wall Kimmerer writing Sweetgrass. And she says throughout the book that all thriving is mutual, right? And like Mm. you were sharing that beautiful analogy of, (laughs) oh gosh, your analogies are just speaking to my heart today, (laughs) putting that backpack on your back and climbing that mountain all by yourself, right? And sometimes we, it it takes more courage than others to to reach out and, and ask for help, right? And by doing so, we're also building this, or strengthening this foundation of trust with whomever we are reaching out to, right? And Brene Brown reminds us that trust is made over many small actions, right? And trust can also be made over big actions and <laughs> more, <laughs> more so it's, it's a series of small actions, right? So by, by reaching out and making yourself vulnerable to this person, they then know like, oh, safe space Mm -hmm. I can do the same and then it's this this relationship of reciprocity right and as Glennon Doyle reminds us all thriving is mutual or that was Robin Mulkimum or there is no such thing as one way liberation that's what Mm, she says yes yeah yeah so and then the the load gets lighter and it's actually fun because all of a sudden we're going hiking together. And exactly. <laughs> and now we can look at the trees around us and enjoy right. the scene yeah. versus just being like, climb them. Oof, this is heavy. You right. get to share and enjoy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Literally, like actually, literally, um, Cass and Brent and I, the two soul humans, families that mm, love, we were hiking last weekend and we got to this pretty steep downhill part and we were we were slipping and sliding quite a bit and we got to this ginormous fallen tree that we totally could have just easily gone around and I just mm-hmm. see Cass approach it <laughs> and I'm watching her behind and she just starts climbing and then she's like sitting on top of the tree like she's riding a horse and it's just all of a sudden we're playing right mm-hmm. and like imagining had I been doing that by myself it would have been a completely different experience. And then of course I'm going to climb the tree, right? Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. I love that. That's That speaks to what I feel you were alluding to. Um, how can we support each other, right? Mm. Like we can be each other while we're doing, we can be there for each other while we're continuing to do this work and we can also play. Yes. And both are on the same spectrum, you know, it's not an either or. So I love that right. analogy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. Thank you so much for going there with me today. I think that this is a really powerful thing for people to hear always. And especially at the new year when maybe there's that rhetoric and that pressure of like new year, new me, I have to achieve all these things to be worthy or X, Y, and Z. But this- In a week. In a week, yeah. (laughs) And then you burn out and you don't achieve those things because there's all this pressure and intensity. But I think when we approach the goals we have with these intentions and we acknowledge that the timeline can change, the way it looks can change, and we're going to focus how we want to be as we move through it, that's what makes it sustainable. And I think that's what makes it so powerful. How do you kind of check in throughout the year, aside from the people in your life, which I think is really important that you named, what other ways do you check in to kind of like maintain that course, maintain that motivation, remain grounded in your intentions? 
That is such a great question, Halls. And as you know, I am very rooted in ritual and ceremony and daily rhythms. And some ways that I check in include having visuals around me. I'm a very visual person. Mm -hmm. right? So I, I have on my main altar a wolf that I've shown you before that I drew a couple years back that's been evolving ever since that has my intentions and values written into the fur. And it's gorgeous. It is inked on my left arm as a mm. <laughs> constant reminder on my body. Um, not saying that all of you <laughs> listeners need to go and like get your intentions. This is my year of my tattoo. <laughs> so I mean... <laughs> Sorry, dad. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Love you, Michelle. <laughs> um, so, so visuals also, mm -hmm. I keep lots of, of nature around me at all times. I've been holding this rock in my hand for our entire conversation, mm -hmm. right? Um, I write on my mirror, um, as I shared, uh, every evening, I have another writing ritual where I reflect on my gratitudes for the day, my sunflowers for the day, those moments that brought me joy. Um, one thing that I'm proud of and an affirmation, right, to make sure that I'm checking in with myself. And did I show mm -hmm. up in, in my values and within my intentions? Um, and talismans in the form, there's certain... Um, pieces of jewelry that I put on every day and as I do I say the person's name out loud mm. and who gave it to me and so that and that speaks halls to how we were just talking about okay so who do I have these conversations with right so it's these these people in my life who are that support system right and daily reminders on my on my body and that's um, exactly how I see jewelry too. It's like, these are the people that hold me and I'm carrying you with me as I move through this. Yeah. Yeah. So those, those are some ways. Um, a lot of it has to do with ritual, daily ritual. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about ritual, I'm not like some big ceremony. It's like writing three things in a journal. It takes 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't have to be a, a big thing. Um, it could even be like it, while you're brushing your teeth, you know, say it as you're yeah. putting your toothpaste on your toothbrush, mm -hmm. checking yep. in in those ways, whatever works and makes mm -hmm. it sustainable into your daily routine. And also like maybe making it joyful. Like what is mm -hmm. maybe it's like, okay, I pour a cup of tea or hot chocolate or coffee mm -hmm. and get a piece of cake. And I think like like do my writing ritual or I think of those intentions I have yeah yeah I'd love to hear more of of ways that you practice that mm. as well I do from your rewilding school I have mm -hmm. definitely made your I've done like gratitude list of 10 things for years and years but I've added on the sunflowers which I really love focusing on those moments of just like pure joy and then the what I'm proud of in an affirmation and then I have a list of like affirmations I write down in my head if I notice I have like a limiting belief or something about something like you know wanting to write a best-selling book I'm like did I actually believe I could do that no not the first time I had the idea but I started writing it down every day every single day, writing it down, writing it down. And then eventually got to the point where I'm like, well, maybe like I've seen it enough. I've thought it enough. I've written it down enough. So I'm working with, and that can also change too on whatever that is. Um, but kind of trying to work on a limiting belief and slowly scaffolding my way to the thought that I want to work towards or the dream I want to work towards. Um, so those are helpful and for me, just having the three words I find really helpful. So I have my meditation practice. I have those rituals and routines. But when I have those words that I can anchor on when I'm in those practices, I find it more helpful when I'm stepping outside and into conflict. And maybe I don't always 
pick up on it right away. But then as I reflect back, whether it's in meditation or in a writing practice, I can come back to those words and intentions. Um, and the writing on the mirror, I think is another great one. And I like to have, um, my first meditation teacher taught me this. He put a little like piece of rubber on the top of your key chain. So it was anytime you come to a door, you take a breath. Anytime you're unlocking a door, anytime you touch that key, you pause and breathe. So I try to have an intention for that, um, whether it's breath or maybe it's repeating my intention to myself in those moments too. Love that. Those little reminders to bring us back to the moment. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited that we got to share these practices and kind of this workshopping of intention setting for the new year. Um, in next week's mindful moment episode, I'm going to kind of break this down into a meditation for people. So there will be that space for you to practice it in meditation. I encourage you to like reflect back to this episode with your journal too and writing these things down. I think that might be one of the most important parts is writing these intentions down for yourself so that you can come back to it. Um, it also gets some muscle memory, some mental memory in there. Um, is there anything else that you would recommend people do as they work towards their intention and the new year and maybe something they can do today to set that foundation? a great question Halls, and uh, a suggestion that I would like to make it's an invitation right take it or leave it is take a moment to pause and reflect right going back to that importance of play right if we're going to put in all this hard work what brings you unapologetic joy what brings you joy, right? And and make a list of what brings you joy. You can call this your yes list. We, we've done this in, in rewilding school, right? And, and the reason why I am suggesting this is because as animals, we are wired to survive, right? We've all heard the term survival of the fittest. So thinking in this expansive, positive way requires daily devotion and dedication. It is not a luxury, right? It takes literally every single day choosing, right? So making a list of what brings you unapologetic joy. Brene Brown reminds us that it is no longer survival of the fittest. It's survival of the nurtured. Mm. Right. And so make a list of these things that bring you joy. Right. It could be going outside. It could be music. It could be love. It could be freedom. It could be any make a list. Right. There's absolutely no limit to this list. And then once you have made this list, pause again circle three to five words maybe these will be your intentions maybe that is how you come up with your intention right and then put these three to five words somewhere where you can see them every day maybe you make an art project with it maybe you put it on a post-it note maybe you write a poem about it maybe you write it on your mirror right because when we put ourselves in the way of that which brings us joy our desires begin to come towards us. Mm. We start to realize that, yeah, life is hard. That's part of it. And it's also happening for us, right? So when we are on purpose choosing not to be surviving, when we are on purpose choosing to thrive, that which we desire starts to show up. And it can, it can easily be missed if we're not paying attention right so hence these practices of sunflowers right so mm -hmm. we know that we're going to be writing down at the end of the day that which brings us joy so you better believe we're going to be looking for it as we move through our days regardless of how hard it is regardless of how easy it is right mm -hmm. because every day is different so yes make a yes list 
those things that bring you joy. Circle three to five words. Put them, create with them somewhere where you can see them every day and allow that to be your miracle grill for your intentions to make sure that you are including these into your every single day. <clears throat> oh, thank you so much for giving us that miracle grill. I love <laughs> that welcome. practice. You know, I love the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> How can we support you and work with you in the new year? Because I say this, because I think it'll especially will help people stay rooted in their intentions. Thank you, Halls. I really appreciate you asking that question because I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I got to remind you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You can support me first and foremost by checking in with yourself and asking what do i need and being honest about what that is whether mm -hmm. that's with me or other people in your life right and and if that leads to connecting with me on a regular basis or for a yoga retreat <laughs> um uh, rewilding school is happening again in March, mm. uh, Dominican Republic uh, in February. As of right now, there are still a couple more spots. Um, I don't know how, where we'll be when the episode airs. And I thoroughly enjoy occupying the container of Life Coach with beautiful souls. Um, I teach yoga in person and virtually as well. And I am a bird. I am traveling a lot of the year. So uh, different ways that we can stay connected can be found great abiding on great abiding yoga. There's another word <laughs> on all the socials added.com to that. That's my website. And um, yeah, so the, the way that you can most support me is first checking in with yourself and asking, what do I need? And if I can be supportive to that, then holla. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'll have in the show notes, there's going to be the links to all of Tara's offerings and ways you can connect with her. And I personally cannot recommend enough the opportunity to work with her. And I think I've done rewilding school twice. So I really like it. <laughs> so I would recommend it. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time and being so vulnerable with me today and sharing this skill that has helped me grow so much with others. I'm really grateful that we can put this out. Me too. It has been such an honor, Ali. I am so grateful and blessed to be able to share this life, this work, and this most importantly play with you so. <laughs> thank you for taking time to listen to the wise one inside of you today please rate review and subscribe to this podcast to help it grow until the next time let's keep taking it one breath at a time